The latest minutes from the Federal Reserve says economists believe that the banking turmoil will trigger a mild recession later this year. But does that mean that you should put the search for your dream home on hold? Joining now to weigh in on the considerations home buyers are making in today's market, we've got Columbia Business School's Paul Milstein, who is the professor of real estate and uh, Christopher Meyer, thanks so much. Christopher Mayer, excuse me. Thanks so much for taking the time here today. Uh, first and foremost, Chris, what, what should people be rem remembering when they are looking at the environment right now, looking at the Fed's policy pathway and, and hearing what bank execs are saying, while at the same time just saying, look, guys, I'm just trying to buy a home. I'm just looking for the, the spot of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, as far as I'm concerned, I think they should first focus on let's buy a uh, let's buy a home and how to think about it. But I will say that it's a you know the economic environment is a very tough environment. When I was on here about a year and a half ago, I think my kind of headline quote was now might be one of the worst times to buy a home um, in the coming year that uh, that there has been in a long time, and I still think it's a pretty tough time to buy a home right now. You know, it's it's the macro environment is tough, but there's also just not a lot on the market and there's probably not going to be a lot on the market coming, you know, for quite some time. Let's talk about that quite some time for a moment, Chris. It's Julie here because are, are we talking about potentially a generation in Gen Z that will never buy their own home potentially? In a, in a higher proportion than no, I, I I think you know so, sometime is you know sometime is kind of a year or two three years you know the you know lifetime is a little bit longer but you know I will say that for a long time we've seen the home ownership rate declining in this country if you look at sort of young people we're talking decades not um you know not just a Gen Z issue and you know that's that's really been driven by challenges you know, wages at the bottom in the middle of the income distribution haven't been keeping up um, with, you know, the housing market and even with the cost of living. And so it's gotten tougher for many people to be in a financial position to buy a home. And credit has never really recovered from where it was, not just in 2005 and six, but even in the early 2000s, credit has continued to be tighter to buy a home, you know, going forward. So, Times have been challenging for those folks. I think for the Gen Z people that are looking and saying, you know, are we, you know, thinking about buying a home at some point, which includes my kids um, at some level, you know, they're, I think the answer is yes, they will be able to do so. But, you know, a lot of the houses, you know, right now with interest rates having fallen so much um, during the, you know, 2000 to 2020, 2021, you know, a lot of people who owned homes refinance mortgages. And there are a lot of people out there sitting with two and three quarters, three, three and a quarter percent mortgages. And those people are just not going to be anxious to sell their homes in an environment where the new home they have to buy, that trade up home is going to be, you know, at an interest rate of six and a half or seven, even at six. So a lot of those folks are going to say, look, I'm going to renovate. I'm going to kind of stay in the home. So that's the sense that there just aren't you know, a lot of the homes that would have been traditional starter homes, I think people are going to be staying in longer. And so I think that's going to open up the market for home builders and new construction in a way to make the case to people to try and trade up a little bit. And I think home builders may also want to start to kind of move, you know, down market a little bit and try and build more of the kind of housing that first time home buyers would want to get. So yeah. some of this really is a supply issue as much as a demand issue. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, my searches have really changed from Toll Brothers homes to now just cars that have a good frunk. So at the end of the day, I mean, the search <laughs> patterns have changed. The prices that we're looking to pay have changed so drastically. Have the credit scoring practices changed enough to really keep up with all of the different payments that we make to give a better sense of the payments that we are able to make on a timely manner to give us kind of a better shot at, at getting approved for a loan, even when we're going for something as large and as equitable as a home purchase? Yeah. So I will sort of say one of the big focuses of the Biden administration from a housing policy is to try and open up access to home buying, to look at alternative measures of credit for people who may not be fully participating in the traditional um, housing finance system, but make their, more, make their rent payments on time and have made their rent payments on time for years. And so there has been a big push to create alternative credit scores that are ways to broaden access to credit. 
to, you know, traditionally disadvantaged groups of people. And that's been a very important focus. I think we're, we've seen some action there and we're going to see more, both at um, FHA, um, you know, VA and at FHFA, Fannie and Freddie. So I think there is a push to broaden access to credit, to have alternative ways to look at that for folks, because it is, you know, for for some people, I think there are people who historically would have been able to buy a home, but the tighter measures of credit that people are looking at now are saying, gee, you know, we're going to make it harder for you. And I think those are people who could and should buy homes, were able to sustain home ownership historically. And, you know, we got to a home ownership rate in this country of 69%. And that was a good thing, not a bad thing. And lots of those people were able to continue to make their payments. And we should be able to provide a broader amount of credit into the market. And just quickly, Chris, for those who are not, aside from home buying for a minute, if somebody wants to invest in real estate, and I know that's a big bucket right now. What's the best way to do it? Is it buying home builder stocks? Is it buying fractional, you know, multifamily? What, what do you think? I Look, I think if you're looking at investing in real estate right now, I would start with real estate investment trusts. They've been beat up a lot. You can buy, you know, shares of office REITs or apartment REITs, even, you know, to some extent, single family where, you know, particularly office and apartment where you're able to buy at very significant discounts to the market. I think the buy to rent is a tough business and you've seen institutions pull out of buying new properties and the I buyers have bought out because it's sort of a lethal combination of home prices that are very sticky on the high side, rents that where there's pressure to start falling a little bit and very expensive credit. And the combination of those three things doesn't make it great for sort of buying with an investment horizon. Um, at the moment, it works if you're trying to live in the home over a longer period of time, but it's a tough market for investors. And I've never been a big fan of fractional ownership other than a vacation homes, where I think there's a thesis there. Mm. But, you know, selling a fraction, you know, buying a fraction of your home, having somebody co-invest with you, you know, unless it's a relative, you know, go focus on trying to get an FHA loan. You know, those are available, you know, buy the home, save a little bit for a down payment. The traditional way of buying a home is still the best way to do it. The fractional things are often expensive and not great deals for consumers, you know, who are buying a home to live in it or, you know, rent to own. Those business models are more expensive than just going doing the things the old fashioned way. Christopher Mayer, who is the Columbia University professor, joining us here today to talk all themes, all things home. I will let you know when I upgrade my searches from cars with good fronts to perhaps at least a shipping container home. Chris, <laughs> appreciate the time. Excellent. Great talking with you and good luck. Likewise. Thank you.